public comment. Um, I believe we have one member of the public. Do you wish to make a public comment? No, no thanks. Come on in. Um, if you can, grab a, a chair around the table. There's three or so of them around here. I'll screw you. take us through um, a little bit of a process piece first um, and then we're going to distribute the summaries of the round one recommendations as we understand them. Um, I think we're incomplete um, on a couple of them um, but we'll, we'll fill in the blanks as we go. Um, so here's kind of what the process looks like for reviewing the recommendations and finalizing them. So the way we ended up doing this was that individuals, well, we, we identified topics, um, we broke into subgroups, and then we, I probably shouldn't have flipped this over because you're just gonna get distracted. Um, so we broke into subgroups, and then those subgroups did long lists. Um, you consolidated that down. We gave you some prompts and some ways to start thinking about the recommendations as well as a template to complete. Um, I believe most of those are complete. Um, so, and then we've kind of tried to summarize them into a single uh, sheet, which you all will get. Um, and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna sort of look at all of them together. Um, so you'll, you'll get a sense of what everything is that's sort of on the table right now. Um, our intention on this, and I need everyone to be really One step clear about. Thank these. you so much. Okay, I'm I'm probably going to be back and forth. That's all right. Me. I'll fix it. Um, so, um, the intention today, and I'm going to need everyone to be really um, decisive about this, is to under to seek to understand at a pretty high level and only ask clarifying questions. You'll get a chance to have an in-depth review of every recommendation via online. So we will distribute all of the completed recommendations to the entire group. It will be your choice how much or how little review and comment you provide for the full deep recommendations. So today we're gonna keep it at 10,000 feet, okay? Um, we can't get into the weeds. There are 18 recommendations on the table right now. Um, we cannot get into the weeds on any one of them, let alone all of them, in the time that we have. Um, so we're gonna try to understand it at a pretty high level with knowing that you'll be able to read and provide all the commentary that you choose to um, in a digital format, understanding that if you all write novels about all of them, it's going to become increasingly difficult for you all to come to consensus as a group about what those recommendations are. But we are trying to structure the process so that as a group, you all feel comfortable with all of the recommendations that are put forward to council, at least at a yellow level. So we're gonna be using a red, yellow, green. So red, thumbs down, deeply concerned um, about this recommendation and changes would need to be made before you personally would be able to um, go for that. And we can say, what would it take to get you to yellow? Um, but, but that's what a red or thumbs down would be yellow um, I'm okay with it but I have some concerns or reservations green we're good with it so um, we're gonna try to get a little bit of a straw man vote today and see generally where the temperature is for the 18 recommendations so we're gonna go through a fairly rapid voting process that's <coughs> mostly gonna be to inform the people who are the authors of those recommendations um, so then what we'll do we'll go through that it'll make more sense as we actually do it um, and then we will assure that we have all the recommendations, we'll distribute them to the group for review, you'll give your comments, we'll give those back to the groups to make modifications based on the comments that you've received, and then um, do a final round of voting on the 16th. In the meantime, um, we're also going to begin round two. So we only have this meeting, the combined meeting next week with the Just Transitions Planning Committee and two more meetings after that, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially this group has three more times as this configuration and one time with the Just Transition Planning Committee 
um, to get us to our finalized recommendations by uh, April 8th. And really, we need to have those in hand probably by April 6th in order to do any last bits of formatting and just grammatical refinements and those kinds of things. So I have all of that written out <laughs> on this page. Um, and uh, you don't have to, you don't have to worry too much about keeping track of all of that because we'll continue to reinforce that and tell you what's what. Um, so um, I think without much further ado, what we're gonna do is distribute the round one summary recommendations. Um, give you all a chance to, um, Okay, divide these up approximately half and half. Go ahead, um, take one, pass it around. Actually, I can use one yeah, of this. Um, I think we should have enough um, for, for everyone. <coughs> there might be a couple missing. Okay, so let's, uh, we may end up needing to share with the neighbor or with the neighbor. Yeah, I mean, it might be helpful for note taking purposes, and I can probably. Um, give this one up to, to someone mm -hmm. uh, before too terribly long. <laughs> All right, um, so our three categories, I think let's just take five, seven minutes and let you read through these, um, understanding that we did have um, a couple missing on transportation, so once we get through the review, um, we'll have you all give us the high-level summary of those recommendations um, so that we get at least a, a sense of what you're working on. So let's just take a minute to review the recommendations. Josie, I've been on the computer too, so if you need to give that one up, I can run with this one. I'm going to help you up now. Another one. apologize in advance if we did not adequately capture the right main idea for anyone's recommendation. So we can go through a clarification round and make sure that um, you feel like what is reflected on this page is representative of um, the main idea that you're putting forward. Um, so let's go ahead and um, 
the idea is, is that we need to go through these again pretty quickly. Even if we spend one minute a piece on these, that's 20 minutes. Um, and we want to spend maybe a total of an hour or so reviewing the draft recommendations, maybe 40, 45 minutes if we can. Um, although we don't want to shortchange the process, um, there is this urgency with only having three meetings left that we need to kick off round two and get the next round going as well. So there's an intensity and some heat on this um, that we're going to have to be mindful of. Um, so with that, let's start with the Renewable Energy Group and go down um, kind of one by one and just verify if that um, is at that 10,000 foot level clear about what the recommendation is and or if the recommending group would like to make any of their own clarifications about what that recommendation consists of. Um. On the smart grid, there was a second su suggestion, which was that that the deployment be designed in order to make use of the smart grid when the deployment is pa is partial, and I don't see that there. And um, again, we want to be more aspirational than this and challenge the city rather than um, saying what was already in the 2019 plan. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that there's a second part of the smart grid recommendation that includes making use of the smart grid when it's partially complete and not waiting until it's complete to do that. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay, great. Any other clarifications or questions on that particular point? Yeah. Is this one referring to advanced metering infrastructure? <coughs> yes. Okay. okay, any other clarifying questions? Does everyone have a basic understanding of what a smart grid is? Okay, all right. So next one, um, and for your own notes, you may want to make that modification that Marsha offered around, um, it includes uh, smart grid utilization at partial completion or something along those lines. Yeah. And then for the second point, uh, the home energy management system, there was also a uh, secondary recommendation for tying into um, more of a in advance of bidding system where people might be able to make a profit for being a pseudo battery by allowing them to reduce their or throttle their energy usage and possibly get redeem redemptions back for their altruistic nature. <laughs> okay. For like better description. Yeah, so let me make sure I'm hearing this clearly and that everyone else is holding it as well. So what I think I heard you say was that it allows people, an in, or it provides incentives for people to have home battery storage or commercial yeah, battery so, storage? Uh, to, no. to, so they can tie in their HEMs or their home energy management systems to smart thermostats uh -huh. and they'd be able to say, I am willing at peak hours to reduce my usage, right. thus acting like a battery and that they don't use as much energy. Right, so then they're essentially shaving the peak load and getting a credit for that. Yes. Okay. Shifting loads, but yes. Okay, or, well, in some cases they might not be shifting the load at all, so if they're just letting their home get hotter as a result. It's offsetting the, the, their demand to a point where the demand is lower so that electrical costs for the city are down, go down. Right. So it is, it is about shaving peak demand through home energy management. Yes. Okay. Or maybe using peak, using. Using the, the peak supply. Using a peak supply to charge your car at a time when there's excess solar. Right, so be the other part. It's okay, so it's both. So it's about yeah. reducing demand as well as utilizing energy at off peak hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, any other clarifying questions on that one? Yes, oh, not on that one. Okay, um, so and we're capturing this too. So we'll continue to upgrade this summary list as time goes on. Um, just please understand all of it's kind of a work in progress. Um, all right, so next point. Um, and I think this is my fault. We, I think this was assigned to me that we, um, we also had an idea of um, increasing the amount of solar, rooftop solar, to up to 30% of, um, of usage. 
um, which will help the RPA not have to build excess. So increasing the solar. Okay, so I that's a whole that's a whole there. recommend. Yeah, yeah, it would be another item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, or is it too late to put that in there? Could it, no. Could it be nested in the distributed energy resources? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's right. supposed to be in there. We've so got we've, we've got remove disincentives. Yeah. Um, and then the thirty percent goal is like a a, a a deployment an implementation feature because you can't go too far, but you can go way farther than we are. Yes. So wait, yes. they only allow 30% of your total yeah. usage? No. No, no, it would be, and we talked with Andy from PRPA, how much should we be using or putting onto the grid from here to help PRPA not have to build additional resources? And sort of to hear with some words, maybe up to 30%. Right. Because that's not the consumption of the house. It's not the consumption of the house. The consumption. How much we could potentially put on a roof in long up and not overburden the system. Got it. The consumption of the house is 120%, okay. as okay. always. The idea is that the market penetration of solar panels on buildings in Longmont could be up to 30% before we would have to fix the grid to handle right. more. Right. Yeah. Okay. And when you're talking about grid, you're talking about distribution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Transmission network. So that's yes. the local distribution network. So yes. You can create yourself a bigger problem by over delivering solar. You can't mm -hmm. yeah. you fix it by infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're trying to get at. So much before we overload. And so the third point here on the distributed energy resources, an element of that is increasing or going up to the maximum sort of input that the city of Longmont as a whole, residents and everybody can put back to the grid mm -hmm. um, before it causes cascading infrastructure issues. Correct. Okay. Um, are there other um, clarifications or points about what specifically that recommendation is about. Okay, um, let's go to uh, city reductions in greenhouse gases. So, um, so this is about continuing as a city to uh, advance and promote um, internal as well as external sustainability practices, particularly around greenhouse gases. So that's the greenhouse gas inventory, um, generally monitoring and managing city facilities and city buildings in integrity with the climate action um, resolution. Um, what else does do the creators of this one want to add or say about that? That mostly get it. Okay. Questions? Clarifying questions? Okay. Um, and then workforce development um, really focused on understanding the current resources and assets and gaps in workforce education programs and then fund, helping to fund and incentivize programs to um, move into uh, jobs and positions that support renewable energy and weatherization and um, electrification, manufacturing, supporting, uh, supporting industries, etc. Anything to add or clarify there? <coughs> yeah. um, moving on to transportation, increasing coverage and frequency of public transportation. Um, so I think that that one's fairly intuitive, basically bolstering the public transportation system. Um, making it easier and easier for people to use and choose public transportation options versus um, versus a single occupancy vehicle. Um, any particulars that anyone wants to point out about that one? Okay. I have a yeah. question about it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> this does not seem to mention electrification of the. Um, Transit vehicles shouldn't that be there? And I think it's, it's in the. Ah, thank yeah. you. We don't. We didn't write it up, but it's renewable <laughs> versus auto transit. Mm -hmm. So that would be electric, renewable natural gas, those types of pieces. And okay. I think even in, if I remember the detail of this recommendation, it also talked about electrification of the fleet. Is, am yes. I making that up? Okay, so I think it's just a little bit further in the deep. They got it, but I didn't 
okay, thank you for the question. Um, education and uh, partner with schools and multi multimodal options and benefits. Yep. Would you like so to give a quick summary? Of, yeah, yep. three parts. So one is working with school districts around um, cleaner fuel, so electrification and all that is just overall transition. The second part is incentivizing programs um, for kids and families to do more biking and walking or maybe carpooling. So figuring out what some incentives or fun incentives to see for kids. And then the third one is just overall education of younger and younger generations of kids around the importance of transportation that is alternating to just that. I think that this, this point is really important and is uh, sort of goes across the three groups. We have talked about this and we didn't put anything but I think there should be something that sort of groups uh, renewable energy use, buildings and transportation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to education mm -hmm. in particular. Yeah, so w round two includes a group that's exclusively dedicated to education and outreach. So both of young kids all the way through general public and targeted audiences and all that. So I think we'll get there for that one. Um, and so um, Magnolia, just to be clear, is this um, all? This is all focused around school environment. Yeah. So uh, transportation to and from school, uh, including the buses, including alternative modes for people close to their schools, and then also education programs within the schools about transportation. And the carpool. Right, to, to get to school. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay, um, the next one, incentives to use al alternative modes of transportation. Um, so I think there's there may be a little bit more to this one than is written here, um, but looking, you know, so maybe you can speak to this one a little bit further. Phil, I pointed at you, but you spoke up a minute ago about <laughs> it, so I thought maybe it was yours. Um, this is actually on the ways that you can do your type. Got it. Can, try to can you give them us? Can you give us a quick sense of what the um, gist of it is, or is that not? If you haven't reviewed it and you're not sure, that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we might um, we might does any we might hold this one um, unless we understand clearly enough what it. I'll just while you're going through the other ones, I'll double check my email to see if I have anything additional. Okay, okay. thank you. All right. Um, so uninterrupted bikeway network. I think that that's pretty straightforward. Close the um, gaps that are impediments to people riding their bikes from one place to another. So that would be a gap analysis to understand where, if we don't already know, um, there's interruptions in bike paths, and then create the infrastructure to close those networks. Um, alternative work schedules. So yeah. That was mine. So sorry. That's all right. So that really is kind of more of a commuter trip reduction program. So that's an employer-based program that works with the employees to um, offer a menu of options, right? So not everybody's going to have the same solutions, but whether it's an ex uh, you know increased telecommuting or whether it's uh, different work hours and just eight to five, so we don't get all on the roads and off the roads at the same time. Um, those are all, it's a menu. So it, it could be, and, and it would be, there would be a small, I would say it's mostly voluntary, right? But n realizing that of course that could ramp up if voluntary measures don't really show much improvement. Right? So you start out that way and you figure out a way to partner with the businesses and get them to kind of find a champion within their organization to be an evangelist for the other employees. Right. So things like a four-day work week might mean that you yeah. can um, also, you're not only reducing the commuter traffic and pollution from that activity, but you can also potentially reduce your building emissions because you're not um, having to heat and cool the building necessarily, or there may be areas within the building you can reduce. Um, stop and go traffic uh, actually causes quite a bit of pollution starting starting your vehicle in motion. Uh, it takes way more gas than if you can just keep cruising. So that's why we want to kind of worry, worry about peak 
traffic um, and the impact that it has. Um, so, yeah. I think the other piece of this would also be the idea that um, you know, if, if flexible work hours are difficult for people because they all be talking to each other during the same, you know, period or whatever, it can also be teleworking. Right, right, right. So just not driving to work at all. Right. Yep. But still working even better. Right. <laughs> working, right. Working a normal eight hour work day, but uh, having more remote or the option for that. Yeah. I have a comment. Uh, this seems that it um, should be done with a sort of uh, cluster of municipalities rather than mm -hmm. being involved only in long run. Mm -hmm. You're right. And, and that is something that's being discussed regionally in the next couple of years to, for our ozone problem. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but it may only start with like high, you know, large employers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so my thought there is that we want to make it, you know, the volunteer approach, it'd be good for small employers to also be given the opportunity to leave. Alessandra, could you repeat that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your comment. Uh, the, this point seems that would be more efficient if it's done uh, across municipalities. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. All right, and then the last one is renewable set sources of power for transit. So I think, Phil, that's what you're saying, is that that would be a comprehensive um, incentivization towards uh, electrification and... and we talked about all the transit agencies being part of that, and not just RTD. Mm -hmm. Flex and four columns to be out. For that one, because I included, like, net zero um, power, like, net manufacturing for natural gas as well, or is it just for the one? No. So I did find um, that write-up from Delray. And so that, the uh, incentivizing alternative modes of travel yep. is largely focused on, sorry, I just had um, incentivizing charging infrastructure, particularly in high density areas like downtown Longmont. Um, so it says currently there's only one charging station in a public lot in downtown and it's free to charge a vehicle. There are five additional parking lots that could have um, charging stations. So it's just creating a better electric vehicle infrastructure to incentivize people to utilize electric vehicles. And it seems, I would be curious to hear from that group if there's a connection between that one and the renewable sources of power for transit, um, or if those are distinct in your minds? I think the way it's written, it's kind of the same right now, but I, I would also probably want to add something about incentives for other alternative modes rather than just electric vehicles, but it's also back to, I know what I was saying about walking by the company, mm -hmm. you know, those incentives be added to this piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that the incentives would go beyond sort of vehicle charging stations um, to include more free routes, for example, um, on... Or a parking for that child would be to park on the There's different incentives mm -hmm. to provide help by the first to this. All right. Um, let's go... So a little bit more work to do there, probably. Um, let's go to building energy use. Um, so basically um, upgrading the minimum code compliance to the um, 2021 IECC, the, um, last, what's the IECC again? Construction Code, Construction code, code Council. Yeah. All right, thank you. I was blanking on that one for a minute. Um, so most basically to be the most aggressive baseline codes that are, um, that are available. Um, by the I, e isn't it the IECC too? IECC, I think, is, is the that energy code. I B is the, for buildings. There's a, there's they're called the I codes. Okay, all right. Anything to add? Also include adoption of indices that are at the end of the code that are new and then the to twenty one. Um, that you would include solar energy, rate homes, as well as uh, clean charging stations, and then the solar energy rate homes as well as uh, car charging station, rating homes, things that would uh, promote the renewable energy sources in homes that is completely new to building codes, 
people to uh, try to reflect what, what's going on in the marketplace or the uh, building industry. And uh, I think we should definitely take advantage of those. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are some uh, aspirational material uses that are carbon sequestering, so that this, which is actually a, like a generation farther <laughs> along than this. And I, 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 I would like to add the recommendation that we do a review of the uh, code series beyond this, looking at um, carbon sequestration and other forms of zero energy buildings. Okay. So that'll New be a materials. great comment on uh, during the review period, I think, okay. for that one. Mm -hmm. um, all right, electrification. So basically um, creating an electrification feasibility committee um, to oversee research and implementation of electrification for commercial and residential buildings. Anything to add to that or clarifying questions for that? Just that um, <coughs> we didn't think that we could get this all done by <laughs> this, this band of this first phase, so we don't need that. Yeah, and so is there a, is there a predetermined first phase timeline that we're working within? Really? No, 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 well, no, no, <laughs> like, I think that's what you're referring to, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, you're saying. Like this, it's, there's enough complexities in it, it would be hard to do all of them. Right, so, so basically the recommendation is to begin a commission to do a much more in-depth investigation. But the good news is that there's already the work going on with the agency right. works, and so right. it'd be those same people right. pushing forward on that, that right. maybe a couple of added people or keeping it small. Yep, yep. Okay. Is something magic about the word? So eight's a little arbitrary, but uh, great. Okay, um, but I appreciate the pointed specificity. <laughs> yeah, smart goals. Uh, I think that as as we do these, this is one that has a lot of implications and overlap with the renewable energy. So if we develop a way to pull those interlocking pieces together, like the AMI and uh, rooftop solar, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, um, and, and we, we struggled with that a little bit in the beginning, realizing that there are a lot of overlaps between building energy use and the source of energy where it's coming from and that sometimes that's you know building integrated solar and we really steered the buildings group away from that notion thinking that it fall, <coughs> fell more in the renewables category to try to create some distinction but in reality these things have overlap and so as we review the recommendations um, you know maybe there's ways to either combine ones if it makes sense or to um, acknowledge overlaps within the recommendations. But um, it's a given and you know, we kind of tried to, we can well, certainly cross, yeah, 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 we can cross boundaries as needed. Um, okay, next one, commercial energy benchmarking. So a commercial energy benchmarking program um, would ultimately be a mandatory reporting program where commercial buildings uh, initially over 20,000 square feet and ultimately over 5,000 square feet we need to report their building energy use, um, and then that becomes a tool in a number of ways to spur potential audits, to help leasees understand what they're getting into, kind of like an MPG for your car. Um, so anything more to add about what that program is or questions about what that program would do? Um, so commercial energy or commercial efficiency rebates um, and this would be I assume this is about uh, really ex advancing and accelerating ex existing programs that promote efficiency um, is there some more specificity that the author of this would like to add to 
this is really working for the efficiency works program, which is pretty comprehensive. But we realize, I mean, we, we deal with several hundred businesses a year. We take advantage of the rebates right now. Just get the word out and, and um, so it's really about furthering an existing program, right. accelerating right. efforts, increasing efforts towards an existing program. Right. Okay. Um, commercial building retro commissioning and retrofits. Um, so this feels a little bit tied to the one above. Um, is, should it should they be combined? This is. Um, Okay, so retro commissioning, which is kind of going back to an existing building and making sure that your set points are correct. And Dampers are opening and, and all the those good things. Have been <laughs> accounted for. Yep. But um, what we have It's a bigger problem than you might think. <laughs> yeah, it's a big one. There's it lots is. of savings sitting there. And um, we have found that this was not a real popular program. As we roll it out, we have mm -hmm. two or three year even though we offer it for almost free <laughs> so we it's going back and there's um maybe Peter you might talk about that a little bit there's a more of a focus on the small to medium businesses as well and there's a specific program being put together um by Pat River and working with the efficiency working program and as well as uh, more of an emphasis on being good buildings so a little bit similar, and maybe even well, it's kind of a portion of that, but yeah. it's it's really taking what we had out there in the past, which wasn't working too well, and saying we need to go on the set for the got it, make it more fun, make it more fun, and do something like it. Okay, um, residential efficiency improvements and rebates. Um, so again, expanding. Um, it looks like quadrupling a program um, over the next three years um, to encourage residential energy efficiency. Is that is that under is that a limit or is that about the average for that program? Right now it's um, a little under a hundred a year. And when I look at that, I compared because the four cities work together, so I look at what Port Allen says, they're twice our size, they do four hundred homes a year. We should be able to do a lot more than we're doing. So it's but not kind of a lack of interest on the citizen level, or oh, I don't want to be home with you. I know what my block building, my home needs, or things like that. Right. So the point, the answer to the question, though, is that it's not a limit; it's the participation. It's just and that. there's funding for it, but we're just not utilizing the program. So we right. need to increase outreach and efforts to have people take advantage of the existing program. And I do want to mention, uh, about two years ago, I did go through that program with a five-year-old house, and they found that my lower roof didn't have any insulation in it. And so it say, saved me. Yeah. It's going to save me a ton of money. So well, it's a very good people program. people move into newer homes think, my home is fine. I don't really have energy. <laughs> and then you go in and you find out, oh my gosh. They uh, obviously know something out here, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so then, um, and then the low income um, residential energy program. So the first one is a program that is low cost, but that people still pay for improvements. The next one is a program that is targeted specifically at households earning 80% or less of area median income, and they can get free efficiency improvements to their homes. Um, and. I will say one of the things about that is the idea is that some a place that is currently a low income residence will often continue to service low income families um, for years to come. So it has uh, a, a continuing benefit to it, um, even if the current homeowner decides to move or sell. Is this only for uh, low income residents that own their homes, or does this include rentals? It includes rentals. It includes rentals. It includes so rentals. Just having the landlord to sign off. On right. But the, the, the that current program is only for <coughs> single family homes. It's not for multi. Okay. Yeah. But, but it also works for mobile homes. Okay. okay. But there is a different program for multifamily, as I understand it, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, and then the last one, a climate action fund program and staff. Um, I don't understand this one. Can you please explain it someone? Yeah, I don't know why they just put staff. I oh, I think it's probably, yeah. we, because we're humans and we make yeah. mistakes, that's why. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> oh, I think it's saying that it needs a staff person. You need to add staff people right. to help get something like that. Launch, like seated, so wait, can you explain the gist of the program of a key objective or idea there? Um, all of these changes that we're going to, the city's going to mandate, it's going to place a huge burden on a big portion of the population of the city. So we need to add, we need to bolster the already existing programs like Care, Efficiency Works, and those programs, but then we need additional funding. Right, you okay, can, so you can do it in you know, rebates, credit, you know, however you work it out. It's just money is needed. So, so we have talked about all of the Boulder County sustainability fund, right. which is now collecting well, around nine or ten million a year. Eight million, but yeah. Eight million. <laughs> so about two two point three million of that comes from Longmont residents. We send five oh, working together and pull back one hundred fifty thousand. So it seems like there's a little difference between 150,000 and 2.3 million, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit some of that. But if that doesn't work, then you know, we, we know we need funding. So I think John did a nice job of taking a look at some possibilities for developing that. And I think part of that, when we're talking about staffing, is potentially subsidizing and or training individuals to do this work because a big problem that you run into with all of this is not having the uh, the, I don't know what to call the employees to do this work. Mm -hmm. And so, and it, a lot of this stuff is dirty work and it's slow paid and people are not going to be willing to get into it. So if you have a fund that could bolster mm -hmm. those incomes to incentivize them to come out and actually do this work, then yeah. that would tie into that. So this, this is actually a, a broader funding notion yes. than building energy use. It could, right, it, it could cover, it could cover, yeah, Francie. Yeah, I thought it was interesting one of the, the staff that you were recommending for this uh, wasn't just to help manage the fund, but also uh, acknowledging that there might be middle income businesses or residents who want to do large projects, but the need maybe more unique financing methods. So having staff who could research to more like creative financing methods like like you mentioned on bill financing or other things that could explore kind of supporting those um, who maybe don't need like a, all the mm -hmm. costs covered but could be still need some assistance with uh, figuring out all the different financing opportunities. Okay, so what I'm taking away from that, and I know it's an overly simplified version of what you're talking about, but essentially to create an overarching funding mechanism to help support all of the above and what's yet to be created. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it's going to take uh, more than uh, the existing staff and resources to be able to effectively implement these programs and so that they're resourced, they're funded, and there's the talent in-house to do it and we're working on workforce development or whatever may be needed. So it's a, um, this one's really in a category sort of unto itself. So it, um, just out of clarification, it doesn't really fit under the building energy use, um, but it's a, it's a more umbrella notion around funding, which is great, and uh, that's not a criticism in any way, I'm just acknowledging not forget all of us. Okay, um, all right, so that's a quick run through of where we are so far. I know that you all have spent uh, a lot of time and effort outside of this room to develop recommendations and to come up with the details and to work through the you know the groups and to put in um, your time after hours. So I uh, just want to really acknowledge and appreciate the tremendous amount of time and effort that everyone has put into uh, getting us to this point. And this short list does not reflect all of that work um, that we have. Many, many, many pages of documents that you all have sent us, um, and and can see that everyone's been really um, dedicated and working hard. So. Um, so congratulations, this is just a summary. Um, I'm thinking as I went through this, um, I'm not sure that from this group, I heard um, you know, some ideas and I know that once we get the detailed recommendations, you all will have some, um, you know, some <coughs> comments to add to each other's work. Um, is there anything here that causes, um, 
anyone a, a high degree of pause or that you are um, that you know you're already pretty concerned about so it's not about the particulars but just as a concept you feel like uh, any one of these ideas causes you a, uh, a high degree of pause as far as we would like to go into council with a fairly unified um, this group participated in the development of these recommendations and as a body we recommend these things right so we may not all get to be 100% on all of them but I would like to see if we can't get everyone to at least a you know a 60 to 75 percent comfort level with all of the recommendations that are on the table so does anyone feel like you're at neutral or lower um, than that on any of the recommendations as you understand them right now and I sometimes I do like private voting where you guys can't see each other because I know it can be hard to like raise your hand in this moment and be like this thing bothers me or I'm concerned about it um, <laughs> so that's just a you know a social reality, but um, I'm gonna trust that if you have that concern, you would speak up at this point. Yes. Yeah, I, I will preface it by saying I'm not a part of the this council, but I so more of just a citizen. So I don't know if I have the ability to speak at this point. Mm. If I do, I think technically. Not you can speak at the beginning in terms of public invited to be heard, and you can advise your advisory group. But if there's comments outside of that, I think okay, I then I'll honor that. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Josie, I would like to make the uh, opposite <coughs> observation. Yeah. I think that there is not one item on this list that any of us would object to, based on yep. the you know the 50 or 60 percent of you that I know <coughs> in some way or another. Yep. This is a perfectly fine list. My opinion is that it, we are missing an opportunity to push the envelope, because many of these things are already in Lisa's 2019 sustainability report, and this is the time for us to jump up and down and say emergency we should be looking at 10-year plans for neighborhood electrification. We should be looking at, at um, well, like one of the, that I do think is sufficiently aspirational is, is uh, um, zooming up the uh, solar adoption and finding an equitable way to do that. Um, and so, all this stuff is great, but let's get greater. Let's try to let's try to widen this up. This is our shot. Yeah, I, I think one thing I'm thinking of, Marsha, and I'm glad you said this, is that we need to be working on beneficial electrification. The state is already looking at what would a law look like for that, and so we need to maybe put that on our our list to how do we make sure that. Um, neighborhoods, you know, a, a water heater lasts X number of years, mm -hmm. and so if you go into, say, a development that's 10 years old and say, when you replace your water heater, it needs to be replaced with an electric water heater, not gas, mm -hmm. and that we don't say, change out all your appliances, but that we say, when it goes out, it needs to be, when your furnace goes out, it needs to be electric. So how do we put that big piece in here because that's one of the biggest areas that people are talking about right now is getting everything on the grid to 100% renewable and then putting everything mm -hmm. possible on the grid. Right. <coughs> yeah, so I think that, that was one of the issues that our buildings group really struggled with quite a bit. And that's why it, it's just such a big thing. I think we need a few more months to <coughs> I agree with the amount of time that we actually have to do this. I don't think we can sit, you know, I mean, we have a, a very short amount of time to try to accomplish a lot, and there's only so much we can do. But, but just you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to figure out how to do it. Uh, and, you know, the, so the infrastructure half is in the distributed energy resources plan, um, which is kind of long. Um, but the building people need to put the other other side of the coin in, which is how do we get these people to um, get the get the appliances that go with it, mm -hmm. and 
uh, it is it is a citywide program on on a probably next light time six. What do you think, Phil? You're an engineer. Next right. light time six. Six. <laughs> um, okay. Well, anyway, it's a big deal, and it should be there because we need to get it in the collective mind now. And um, I think the other thing that um, uh, I'm really opinionated tonight, but on transportation, um, I know that Fort Collins has had a program to where they had group buying options for EVs, and so there was a huge rebate on, I think it was a Nissan Leaf, is what, where they had the group buying options. So how do we get people out of their um, ICE car and into an EV? And so that, that's another thing that I think, you know, we can look at. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I would agree with uh, Marcia that uh, I'll be in the end as much as we can, but I was also struck by how many things are already imperfectly in progress. And I think we can just by tightening the time frame or pushing mm -hmm. them more money or, or complimenting them for what they're already doing. I, mean, I, I just I think there's without creating even without creating new programs and things that are operating still at half. Like the efficiency work. Yeah, yeah. It could do it's, it's I started a ten percent capacity of what they could or should be mm -hmm. and with more dedicated effort and resources that those yeah. could really mm -hmm. reach their full potential. Okay. Well, so yes, I agree. There, there is a lot of agreement, um, and and I think a, a call to say, you know, a, just a, a pause or a question: Are we are we being aggressive enough um, in in the in the recommendations and aspirations that we're making? Um, so the way that we're going to move these forward, um, I essentially just did a. You know, <laughs> the straw dog vote, we didn't go through one by one, but as a, as a group of recommendations, um, you know, we're, we're yellow to green on everything, um, with maybe some challenge to say, you know, are we, are we pushing far enough with them, um, but, but nothing that we feel like, uh, you know, is, is going to um, be something that's going to be contentious among the group to move forward with. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, I know we don't quite have all of the recommendations in, um, and you know you may have a little bit more time. If you're done, you can say you're done and not continue working on your recommendation. Um, if you feel like you still need a little bit more time, or you have not given us your recommendation, the absolute deadline for that is March 5th. Um, so that is Thursday next week. Um, if you do not provide us a recommendation by March 5th, um, you're going to have to figure out how to get into round two with your recommendation, um, but you're going to be doubling up your work and you may be um, putting yourself for those recommendations at risk of not being included whatsoever. Um, regardless of what we do or don't have on March 5th, we're going to send them to be distributed for um, a detailed review to the group by March 9th. So that will be digitally. Um, so all comments will be gathered um, on digital documents. Uh, we will establish a way to do that so that we can integrate and see all of the comments and all of that. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then your comments, and we'll, we'll reiterate all of this in the email so you don't have to keep track of this yourselves. Um, but then comments will be due by the 16th. At that point, um, you will, these will go back to their authors <coughs> for um, basically integration um, of the of the comments from the group and it will you will have some ability to try to make sense of the comments you got and to adjust the recommendations um, based on that so um, and then those will become essentially those will become final um, at that point I, I do want to just kind of add a sort of a a caveat to that, that we are going to be doing some community outreach during March as well, and to the best of our abilities, getting some community feedback on some of these draft recommendations too. So we'll be bringing you that information as we get it. So there might be some of that that comes after 
that 16th or whatever deadline so but it will be before the end of March so that you kind of will have a whole picture to integrate revise modify as your group sees fit um, before they become final final recommendations for the report so I just want to remind folks of that Thanks. Thanks, Lisa. Um, and then the round two drafts are also going to be due on March 16th so again um, we just you know, basically we need to be wrapped up by the end of March. We have uh, two more sessions as a group after this one. Um, Magdalene, did you have a question? Oh, you're just stretching your body? That's fair too. Um, okay, so does everyone feel reasonably comfortable with the process moving forward? All right, great. Okay. Um, so round two, um, so we, hopefully we're getting through the heavy lifting, right? The three that we just did are the really big heavy lifts, I think, I might be wrong, <laughs> um, but we, we think, you know, as far as greenhouse gas emissions for the city are concerned, that's certainly true. We have covered the areas that have the greatest opportunity because it represents, those three areas represent what? The 85, 90, more than that. 95% yeah. of the greenhouse gas emissions for the city. Um, so that's, you know, that's the heavy lift. That's where we're going to continue to you know, really make sure we've got those recommendations as well developed as we can. Um, the, the three that are remaining um, are land use. And this really we talked about being primarily related to um, a couple of things. Uh, and I think this group is going to have a little bit of work to do to define this a little bit further for yourselves. But we talked about planning and zoning and density. Um, and so that's part of it. And I, I remember that there's been some recent updates to the um, land use code. Was that what it was? Um, so, so there's that. There's also the notion of um, you know, carbon capture within the soil and soil sequ and uh, carbon sequestration within soil. Um, so this group, um, you're going to have to do a little bit of work to define specifically where you want to place your energy within this topic area. Um, education and outreach, Peter. I know you were really passionate about this one, um, so I'm going to be really surprised if you don't join that subgroup. <laughs> um, and then. Adaptation and resiliency, which is where one of the places um, that we put uh, water conservation, for example. So, um, you know, we said water conservation doesn't really do much to mitigate climate change, but we may have to adapt to changing um, availability of water regionally uh, due to droughts. Um, this also has a lot to do with natural disasters. How do we um, address uh, perhaps increasing levels of hail, wildfires, flooding, drought, severe weather. Um, what do you want to add to that? So Ex there's like a yeah. strong public health and protection component in that piece. Right, so extreme heat is uh, hugely detrimental to the health, particularly for older people, people living without air conditioning, heat stress um, causes any number of uh, physical and health ailments. Um, Climate change also brings a lot of different uh, diseases. So yes. Zika so and such good. could move. Lyme uh, disease is Lyme. moving north. Um, so with changes in pests and certainly um, farm and food production. And I know that's not a major part of Longmont proper, um, but you know there may be changes to um, food availability and some of those kinds of things. Um, the one thing that's not <coughs> sort of readily captured in here is probably waste. It didn't come up super strong in our initial conversations, um, although there's something to be said about waste and emissions and consumption and embodied energy and all of those kinds of things. Um, so I don't know if we want to tack that on. Uh, maybe we do land use and waste together. Seems like that could potentially be a combination, especially when we think about composting facilities and landfills and I'm seeing some nodding heads. Mm -hmm. Anyone opposed to me putting waste in this group also? Yep. Okay. Not, not opposed. Yes, <laughs> Not opposed. Do it. And I don't know, do you not know how much this is 
applies to long months, oil and gas, I mean, they methane use or release in the atmosphere is massive. I mean, compared to carbon uh, monoxide, dioxide, methane is a much larger greenhouse gas and when oil and There's gas so drill, it just, it just dumped into the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that seems like it could potentially be in this group. Yeah. As so well. um, <clears throat> there is a methane leakage problem that Longmont can address, which is in our distribution system of methane. Yeah. Um, and we don't. Do we have good figures on how leaky our um, natural gas distribution system All is? I have are, what we've applied in, in our modeling is just the, the average that we know, but we also acknowledge that we don't believe that that's very accurate. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. that the best that data that we're gonna get is from the new air quality study, but it's gonna be a couple years before we have to. <coughs> okay, but that could still go in the, yeah. in the plan. Beneficial electrification is a mitigation strategy for that because you can take that, take it out or tap all the pipes. They don't leak anymore. Um, so uh, that could be part of land use as well as, as it, it's touched on in the existing beneficial electrification plan, but we can like clean it up in land use. One of the things that Longmont does have that a lot of communities don't is we do actually have pretty accurate maps of where all those lines are. Oh. So let's go ahead and pick um, our groups. I'm going to do this in no logical way other than I'm going to call your name and you tell me where you want to be and then we'll move people around if we end up with uh, too much of a clustering in, in one place or another. So Anne, yours is the top of my list. I don't know why, you're just there. Um, I'd like the education and outreach. Okay. Phil? Michelle? Uh, I think education. Ocean? I feel like everybody's going to go for education, I'll go for land use. <laughs> <laughs> Alessandra? Land use. Andy? Land use. Uh, well, you know, well, what, we always have a chance to. Uh, yep. All right, Greg? Uh, adaptation. Marcia? Land use. I'll go to adaptation if it's some. There's too many. Okay, uh, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know? All right. I promised you though. All right, Amy. I think she is not. Where did she go? I was like, wait a minute. She was here a second ago. And Delray is not here. Uh, Joni. Um, I guess education and outreach. Magnolia. I'll do adaptation. Oh, you're breaking mold. <laughs> Blas? Adaptation. Education? Adaptation. Adaptation, okay. And Karen? Um, I'll do adaptation. Can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, does anyone have any ideas? I have a feeling that he's very passionate about water conservation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then we have Amy Del Rey and Solana. Solana, probably education and not. Yeah, I was thinking she would be good in, in that. Okay. And, then, and the ideas on Del Rey and Amy, we can also ask them. Yeah, we'll help later. later with them. Okay. All right, and you know, um, is everyone happy with where you are? Does anyone feel, I can also ask this, does anyone feel like they shouldn't be in a group and they need to keep working on their last round? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not going to mention the transportation group or anything, but <laughs> um, what do you think? Okay, because we do want to get that, you know, we, we do want to work from the highest potential and highest important stuff first. Um, so prioritize your effort there if you have to pick one or the other. Cool. All right. Okay. So these are your um, these are your new groups. So uh, very different than the last one. Um, so we I want to acknowledge that we are all learning a little bit along the way um, together and as a group. So um, I hope that this comes as a relief 
not a frustration to you, but we've simplified the template a bit for round two. <laughs> um, and hopefully clarified it a little bit as well. Um, the frustrating part could be of like, okay, now the other ones are in this other format. I don't want you to worry too much about it. And at the same time, if you feel like this really strengthens your recommendation, um, you can use this template to modify your last recommendation. We're not going to ask you to do that. Um, we may end up, um, when we summarize things, we may end up trying to reorganize things without modifying content, right? So we, um, these are your recommendations. We are not here to uh, change them but we might reformat them a little bit so that there's consistency in the document, if that makes sense. Um, so at any rate, um, the, so the, the template is shorter now and it reduces some of the redundancies that were in the last version and hopefully clarifies them. Um, so starting with the goal, and so it starts with the subgroup area, recommendation title, you all will get these. Um, then it starts with a one sentence description of the desired outcome of the recommendation. So that's the goal or objective. That's similar to what is on this sheet. Okay, these aren't perfect examples, but they are examples of what that first basic overview of what the recommendation is. Um, second, recommendation summary. So describe the policy or solution um, informed by science and equity. Three to five sentences, but no more than two or three paragraphs. And this is the, in the SMART goals, and I know that some of you struggle with that a little bit. Um, there's, this is based exclusively on SMART goals. So S is for specific. Um, what will be accomplished? What actions will you take? Who is involved? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, a general time frame with more information, time bound section, and where does the action take place? So there's, I think, a little cleaner prompts for that one. Um, measurement, describe how we will measure progress for this specific goal or recommendation, what metrics are we going to use on if and how well we're meeting the goal and what is the source of the metric. Achievability, under what conditions is achieving the goal realistic? What, is, what are the necessary skills and resources? So this is where the financial summary goes. Um, so that's still informed by, by the template and you can still use that template to help you move through the process of getting to your recommendations. Um, but what are the funding needs and possible sources of funds for your recommendation? And also marketing, training, and incentives, actions you need to enable passage and or successful implementation of the policy or solution. R, in SMART, relevance, how does the goal align with mitigating and adapting to climate change? Why is the result important? <coughs> Consider both the hard and the soft benefits. <coughs> time bound, the time frame to accomplish the goal and the key milestones. And then finally, social and economic impacts. So describe who might be impacted and how, including benefits, barriers, and potential negative outcomes. Include suggestions for how to mitigate any potential negative outcomes. So it's shorter. Um, hopefully the directions are cleaner and clearer. Um, and you've had a little practice. So the second round we're hoping should be an easier lift than the first. And then I'm not gonna uh, read through this but we did, I did do a sample recommendation. Um, I took the commercial building benchmarking as an example. Um, it was fairly random in my selection. It was one I knew a little bit about, so it was easier for me to use. Um, and what you can see is how we filled it out with the new template. So you can see an example of some of the language. And it even includes, we decided this was a good idea, a few of the comments that we had as reviewers to see you know, how might we make that particular recommendation more specific or more, um, you know, what a reviewer's comments might potentially look like. Um, so hopefully a little bit of resources to help you expedite and upgrade your process a little bit for round two. Um, everyone will get a copy of this and uh, we'll make sure everyone has digital copies of everything as well as um, we didn't print out one of these for everyone on this, but we can if we need to. And yes. similarly to last time, I have information packets for, um, they're not as, some of them are not as extensive as the, the last time, but it has the, the spreadsheet with a, a synopsis of current city efforts and the current data that we have available 
He envisioned lawn lawn and sustainability plans for reference and a couple of other things that are more specific to the subgroups. And we have some additional things that we can send you digitally too. We don't want a huge stack of information, but something to get you guys started with. So yeah, I have those all separated out. Oh, okay. And they do, each pack, each group has the <coughs> that big 11 by 17 and perfect that you can reference on like the DeVos Okay, so for, for this, um, we're only going to have about 20, 25 minutes for you to get together in your groups. So, um, and we're not going to have a working session beyond this one in this room for these groups, um, just because we're running out of time. <laughs> um, so this is your time to come together as a group, maybe get your preliminary list of ideas together, um, and then sort out who's going to help do some of the administration and how you're going to uh, work together for um, identifying and completing round two recommendations. So then what's the four hour action next week then? Thank you for asking. Um, so next week um, we're going to bring this group together with the Just Transitions Plan Committee and the idea is that you will take um, one of the recommendations that you came up with and work through that recommendation in detail with members of the Just Transitions Planning Committee who have been working on their um, reviewing some of these ideas and, and sharing how those plans um, or recommendations might affect them um, and, the, and their communities. So it'll be a deeper dive to get equity input and, and feedback um, on some of the recommendations that have already been developed. And we'll do um, a little bit of an introduction session in the beginning around, um, around equity, what is equity, what does it mean, what does it look like, um, what is the working definition of equitable climate action that that group has been developing. So it'll be um, some deeper time. Now we may be able to arrange for a little bit of working group time during that session but we mostly want to take, um, take advantage of our collective time together to um, bring more awareness about how the recommendations may um, affect communities in ways that we didn't anticipate. Anyone, Debbie, do you want to add anything to that or Francie? Okay. Three, three to five recommendations like the first round? For um, for this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so why don't we uh, very arbitrarily, let's do um, group one, group two, group three.